We're going to look at the four different Gospels. As some people read this and try to claim that the Bible actually contradicts itself when it's talking about the sign on top of Jesus' cross. So let's get into it. So in the four different Gospels, we get insights into the sign on the cross from each different Gospel. And what I've basically done for you here is written out the chapter reference here from each different Gospel. And I've actually written down in each different Gospel what was actually written on the sign. So if you actually look at what I've actually done for you already, I've actually done most of the hard work for you. But there are a couple of different clues in the scripture when you actually read it that can actually give you more additional context into what actually is actually going on. So the first thing you should realise, and I've highlighted it in black here is that in every single account it says the king of the Jews and I basically written it in black here so you can see in each particular example every single example says the king of the Jews in Matthew it says this is Jesus in Mark it just says the king of the Jews the key phrase in Luke it says this is the king of the Jews and in John 19 verse 19 it says Jesus of Nazareth the king of the Jews so you can already see already all of them say the king of the Jews and if you look at two of them let's say for example Luke here and Matthew you can see that they're both basically saying the exact same thing the only difference is Matthew doesn't say Jesus and when you look at John 19 what does it say it says Jesus of Nazareth the king of the Jews now just looking at all four of these if I wanted to just for a loose very loose explanation you could just say well what this actually says when you look at this is these in totality is this is Jesus of Nazareth the king of the Jews and that would be enough for some of you watching this video and say okay you know what yeah they just decided to focus on different things but I've actually got an even better reason as to why these things may have said different things and why it's not actually a problem now we know that Pilate himself wrote these signs on the cross because it says it in one of the gospel accounts and it says something really key in two of the gospel accounts it says these things were written in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. So what does that tell you? Well, any of you watching this video that are bilingual, multilingual, and speak more than one language, you can already ascertain where I'm going here, okay? You can take one sentence in English or one paragraph in English or whatever it is, and you can basically translate it into another language. And what might happen if you translate it in that different language? You might take some words out, you might add some words in, you might get more specific. The fact of the matter is, when you translate into a different language, you're not always going to get the specific word for word translation of the example. And this doesn't mean you're losing the context or the meaning of what it is. Different languages have different rules based on different things. So it may come down to how you translate a particular name. It might come down to how you translate, translate a different particular place. It might come down to the person you're referring to, okay? But when I know one thing that's really insightful, okay, Despite this being in three languages, okay, written on a cross, which means you could have at least three different variations. And if you look at this in, in its entirety, you can see that pretty much the first three all basically say the exact same thing, okay? So the next time someone says, oh, the Bible is contradicting itself in the four different Gospels, um, you can look at this and say, no, this was written in three different languages, okay? So it doesn't have to be ex exactly word for word in each different language based on the rules of each different language, etc. And if you're one of those people watching this video saying, oh, why does the Bible contradict itself, so to speak? You can see exactly what we're talking about here. But again, I mentioned this earlier on in the video. Why did, why did I underline this? Well, one of the reasons I underlined it was because obviously you can see already that the king of the Jews is in each scenario. And I'd be a bit concerned if the king of the Jews wasn't in each scenario because this is the key point. And how do we know this is the key point? Well, in one of the Gospels accounts, what does it say? Well, in one of the gospel accounts, the one where it tells us that Pilate wrote these signs in, in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin, it says that the Jewish authorities that got Jesus crucified, the Pharisees, etc., came to Pilate and said, don't write the king of the Jews, okay, which is in each scenario, write that he said he was the king of the Jews, okay? So we can see this just by looking at it in four different accounts. What is the significant thing that each writer wanted us to highlight, okay? The king of the Jews. And if you didn't get it just from reading those four references in those different accounts, what did the authorities say? They say, take this part off. Don't write this part. This was the part of contention. We know who was crucified. Okay, it was Jesus, obviously. The Bible says that. And we know that Pilate says it was the king of the Jews, which is obviously something that was uh, an annoyance to them. So on that note, you can see how clearly just by taking these three languages as an example, as to why the, the specific wording might be a bit different and vary in, in, in different examples, okay? When you look at the four examples, you can see that pretty much the first three say exactly the same thing with just little minor details, okay? And when you think about this, just saying Jesus of Nazareth, we can see that's in the first place anyway, but when it comes to different translations, how do you know that Matthew, Luke, and John didn't 
each reference one of the three languages. And Mark just literally took the clearest rendering or a rendering which would make sense in every language, okay, which would apply in every single scenario. That probably makes the most sense. Not that they made it up, just that obviously there was three different languages and the common f message through each language would not be changed, which is the king of the Jews. So, I hope this helped you for whatever reason you decided to watch this video. I'm going to recommend you watch this video right here. It's a great video for you to watch after watching this. And if you're watching this video and this is the first time you're watching one of our videos and you haven't subscribed yet, seriously consider subscribing to the channel below. And there's obviously going to be links in the description box as well you can use if you want to support us even further than the subscription. Thanks and take care.